Hello Internet, welcome to something new. We're going to be doing our tutorial playthrough. Now this is something I've talked about for a while and I just finally decided, you know, we just ended the Overrun series. Why not take this time to do tutorial content? So I want to be real upfront right away is that I am not particularly good at tutorial content. You know, you can look at my mod tutorial and say, you know, that guy really maybe doesn't know how to present things in a very good way. So if you're looking for information about a very specific topic, I would highly recommend that you check Vormithrax on YouTube. He has videos covering the majority of the mechanics in the game. He does really good tutorial content. It's really hard in my head to think about trying to compete with him from a tutorial perspective. So what I'm going to be doing is playing a tutorial Let's Play. What that means is I'm going to play the game uh, pretty normally uh, except for using settings and uh, st a starting scenario and things that I think a normal first time player would use. And then we're going to be very specific about what we're doing and why we're doing it. I'm not an expert at Cataclysm. I die all the time, but I have a lot of information in my brain that I can relay to you as a potentially new player. So for all of you who are watching, who are like the, <laughs> I know some of the dev team watch my videos, obviously not going to be very entertaining for you, but I wanted to, to, to try my hand at some tutorial content. So the first thing we're going to do is create a world. So presumably you've already downloaded Cataclysm. Uh, if you use the launcher, you're probably... Uh, so that's the other thing. We're not on 0.D anymore. 0.E is about to release. Uh, we I don't know what the E stands for yet, but 0.E is the upcoming stable version. The current version of the game is basically identical to what early game 0.E is going to be like. So if you're playing on that stable, this is all going to be perfectly valid information. But if you're playing way after that, or if you're still on 0.D, the game changes so quickly that some of these things are going to be outdated. There are going to be new mechanics that are, are going to help you along the way. But for now, I'm making tutorial content. So when you get Cataclysm, when you download Cataclysm, and you install it and all that good stuff, uh, you're going to come to this menu. Now, it's going to look a little different for you because I have some special text settings, font size, and whatnot. But this is the menu that you'll be brought to. Now in Cataclysm, you cannot just create uh, a new game immediately. You first have to create a world. And a world is just a way of organizing your saves. Each world is its own save. Um, and you can play in between characters that die. You can replay the same world. You can reset things up. Um, so the first thing you need to do is create a world. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we go down, you'll see I already have many worlds already active on my on my save uh, or, or on my computer. So we're going to go down to create world. And the first thing you're going to see is world mods. Now, if you're a first time player, I highly recommend that you don't really use mods. You should only have dark days ahead on the right hand side. If we look on the left, this is the list of mods that are available to us. And the list on the right is the mods that will be added to the world we're playing. Highly, highly recommend. I know it's tempting to, uh, you'll see some cool mods and you'll think, oh man, I really want that in my world. I would highly recommend that you not do that because some of them, especially these that are listed in the core content packs, drastically change the way that the game is played. They change game balance. They change uh, me core mechanics in the game sometimes, like magicalism is a pretty hefty overhaul to Cataclysm that adds spells and monster, fantasy monsters, new locations, stuff like that. And that all sounds very cool, but if you're just trying to learn the ropes of Cataclysm, you really, really should just be playing on a world with Dark Days Ahead. If you have to add mods, uh, they should be separated by category. And if you have to add mods, I would recommend you pick some that seem low impact. So for instance, um, I don't know what's, well, you don't know what's uh, low impact because it's your first time playing. I would really recommend you take nothing from the mods. If you want to take a mod, I would recommend you go, you can use tab to separate, uh, to shift from one of these uh, headings to the next. If you want to change something, I would recommend going to only pull things from the blacklist and I recommend no fungal monsters. Mostly fungal monsters in the game are very tedious to overcome. And when you're a new player, it can be very difficult to understand how to influence them, how to work with them. And so I would really recommend you turn off fungal monsters. And that's in the blacklist section. That is the only mod that I recommend. You see, we also have a balance section. These, I believe, all come with the game. 
Uh, I would really recommend none of them. If you're really, really struggling, the old heal rate mod can help you heal much more quickly in the game. So that is something you may be interested in. Bionics is a bit late game that you probably would not necessarily encounter or have a need for. You really don't want this, uh, if you, especially if you're new and you don't understand the slot system. Everything else uh, I would just ignore for the time being. Next, if we use, uh, for me, it's the bracket keys. Uh, I do not know if that was changed or not. It used to be the bracket keys and then I believe they changed that. So I'm not sure how you navigate between tabs at the top. Sorry about that. Uh, but we're gonna go over to the world options. So if this does not work for you, you or not the bracket keys, excuse me. They're the, the angled brackets. They're the greater than, less than sign. I believe is how you move through here. Um, I would recommend you keep everything set to the default. Now, if you're like me, your defaults might be messed up if you've played for a long time and been updating. So for instance, the initial day on your screen should be day 60, I believe. So we'll go ahead and make that day 60. And we're gonna talk about some things of note. I recommend you keep city size uh, and city spacing the default. You should really get used to playing with the default. Turning up the size of cities can significantly um, increase the amount of time it takes to generate the world when you first start the game. And on my old computer, that would take many minutes of real life time. So I would recommend you keep that at the default. City spacing is the size, uh, the distance between the actual cities. So the higher this number, the farther apart the cities will be. This will lead to more rural map gen instead of in-town map gen. And as a player who is new, you're going to do a lot of looting. So I recommend that you keep this relatively low. Spawn rate uh, will affect how much you will see enemies. I recommend that if you're new and you're struggling, set this down to 80, uh, 80%. 80 maybe even lower if you're really, really struggling. I think for the tutorial, we'll go 80%. This leads to a pretty significant reduction in the number of monsters that will spawn. And honestly, in my playthroughs, I usually set this to 90 just because I think uh, spawns are a little outrageous uh, at the moment. So I would recommend somewhere around 80, maybe 70 if you're really struggling. We'll set it to 80 for this. Carry and rate spawning actually does not have an effect in the game currently. That was... That's a disabled feature, so that doesn't really matter. Item spawn scaling will determine how many items spawn in the game. So if you uh, are playing on a version where they start reducing item generation and you really want more items, you can crank this up. Currently in the game, there are so, so many items that are spawning that I really recommend leaving this at default. And by that, I personally would probably play with around 75%. Um, but for this tutorial, we'll leave that at 100%. NPC spawn rate scaling factor. Same thing, this determines how frequently NPCs will spawn in the game. I generally don't play with NPCs, so it's not something that I have a ton of experience with, but I do hear people all the time say that this number is entirely too low. Uh, I honestly, I've played hundreds of hours and I've only really come across seven or eight NPCs that are just random in the world. So I don't think that they spawn very frequently and uh, you may wanna increase that if you're interested in playing with a lot of NPCs. Next, monster evolution scaling factor. Basically the way Cataclysm works is that monsters generated in the early game are very uh, weak monsters, generally not that scary for us to deal with. At the current moment, it's not that scary to deal with monsters in the early game. So, as the game progresses, monsters will evolve over time, which makes them considerably more dangerous. Important to note, lower numbers mean it is faster. So, if you want to slow down the big scary monsters, you want to increase this number. I don't know what I would recommend for a first-time player. I would say leave it at default so you can start getting used to that. Generally, at default, you won't really start to see the scary monsters until about 30 days into the game. Sometimes it's more like 40 or 60 before you start noticing them in large groups. I would just leave this at the default. I think we'll leave it at default for the moment. Monster speed, this determines how fast the monsters are in the game, and it's a scale. So at, at the moment, uh, a monster with 100 speed is going to have 100 speed. If we set this down to 75, they will have 75% of their normal speed. They will only move at 75 moves per turn. I recommend lowering this if you're struggling. When I learned to play Cataclysm, I set both the monster speed and monster resilience to 75%. Now, monster resilience is the same thing, but instead of affecting speed, it affects their hit points. 
So if you're really struggling, set this down further and further until you learn the different types of monsters, until you kind of learn what is dangerous and what is not. This can be very, very helpful for a new player. Would really recommend reducing these if you're struggling. We'll set it to, I mean, I don't want to go 75. That's so silly. We'll go like, we'll go 85. It's still very, makes them a lot weaker, um, like noticeably weaker and slower. But for the purpose of the tutorial, we'll go with kind of what you might be playing with. Default region type, there is a desert mod. I do not recommend trying to mess with this. Oh, it doesn't even have a uh, alternate setting currently. Never mind then. Initial time represents the time of the day that you will be starting the game. If you're really struggling and you're spawning in the city, you can go ahead and set this to evening so that it's already dark outside when you start the game. For now, we're going to leave that at 8, which is the default. Initial day determines what day you will start the game. This is really important. Uh, if you're on an older installation, your default may be zero. We change that date because uh, starting on day zero, a lot of food and drink are frozen, which make it much harder for a new player and an early game player to be able to survive because all the water and whatnot is frozen. So this is now the default at day 60. So we're going to set this to 60 and I recommend you leave it there as well until you know how to handle cold weather and that sort of thing. Next, we have spawn delay. I do not understand what this does. How many days after? Do not mess with this. Uh, it affects food rot and monster evolution. I've never played with this uh, at a different value. Just leave it the way it is. Season length determines how long each season lasts. It used to be 15 days. It is now 91, which makes the game considerably longer to churn through year after year after year. If you're interested in seeing all the seasons and you're having trouble getting through the early game, you can set this back down to 15. You'll pass very quickly into summer, fall, and then winter. For a new player, I recommend leaving this at 60. This will, um, or I'm sorry, at uh, 91. This pretty much will keep you in spring for most of your, your game. And spring has very favorable weather for a new player. Construction scaling. This just determines how long things take to construct in the construction menu. Um, 50 is, is half of 100, so it's twice as fast. Longer takes longer, etc., etc. I recommend leaving this as it is. Eternal season will lock your season into whatever your default season is, which in this case would be spring. So if you really want to always be in spring, you can just lock this to true. Wander spawns basically allow for zombies to spawn around the map. I believe it's based on the amount of noise that you're making. I really recommend turning this off and leaving it on false. It sounds like it's fun, right, to have additional monsters spawn around and, and to incentivize you to be quiet. The reality is that these are kind of broken. They tend to overspawn, and then you start dealing with one horde, which spawns another horde, and so on and so forth, and it spirals out of control pretty quickly. There's also some issues. Sometimes they spawn inside your base, that kind of stuff. Leave this to false. Surrounded start will spawn zombies where they typically are not. So for instance, if you start in the evac shelter, which is what we're going to do, this has the potential uh, or this will absolutely spawn enemies in the shelter or around the shelter, whereas it would normally be a safe place. I recommend leaving this off for your first few playthroughs. Static NPCs determine if NPCs will spawn at preset locations. So if you go to an NPC settlement, will there be uh, NPCs there? If this is true, then yes, there will. If you turn this off, there will be no NPCs in that area. Next, we have starting NPC spawn. Leave this on scenario based. Basically, it will spawn an NPC next to you if you're in a scenario where an NPC should spawn. Don't worry too much about that. And then random NPCs allow them to spawn randomly out in the world, whereas they would normally only spawn in set locations. Uh, if you want to play with NPCs, you really should set this to true. Otherwise, you have to go to preset locations to find them. If random NPCs are on, you could be walking down the street and immediately bump into an NPC, which is pretty cool if you're trying to play with NPCs. So turn that on if that's something that interests you. Mutations by radiation gives a very small chance that uh, being radiated will allow you to mutate. That's kind of an end game thing. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about this. I usually have it on true. I guess the default is true. Experimental Z levels uh, will simulate movement and whatnot on other Z levels. This will allow for additional functionality like peeking up and down stairs, hauling things up and down stairs, that kind of thing. I highly recommend that you put these on. They are on by default. They used to be off by default, and it does uh, impact the amount of 
I guess, CPU that the game uses. So if you're finding a lot of lag, a lot of uh, you know input lag and, and struggle with that sort of thing, go ahead and turn this off, but you really should have it on because it does benefit you as the player to peek up and down stairs, to haul things up and down stairs. They're very beneficial. It saves a lot of key, tedious keystrokes that you would otherwise have. Plus, the CPU impact is not as big a deal as it used to be. Next, we have a line up and downstairs. This basically just guarantees that if there is an up or downstairs, there will be a paired stair with it. So uh, it, sometimes there are map gen errors where uh, stairs will not line up properly and you will have stairs leading to nowhere. You can turn this on. I usually don't because it kind of breaks the look of things sometimes. And it's really not a big deal if you find a stairway that doesn't go anywhere. And then finally, character pool points determines what uh, in character creation what, there are three basic points that you can use in character generation. Um, I just, just leave it on any. It doesn't matter. You're the only one who's going to be playing on this world. It's not like you need to limit yourself. There's no reason to change that. And then finally, we go over another tab here, and we have finalized world. This will prompt you for a name in your world. You can hold the asterisk button to get a random name. For now, we're going to name this. Oh, I already have a tutorial world. Okay, uh, tutorial playthrough. We'll name this. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, you can press tab or forward uh, the, the greater than symbol to proceed and it will prompt you, are you sure that you're finished? And we'll go ahead and press yes. Uh, which by the way, anytime these pop up, they're almost always case sensitive. So make sure you hit capital Y. And you'll see we now have the tutorial playthrough world created and it exists in our, in our uh, world menu. Uh, you know what? I think we'll call the episode there just because it's been, it was, took a lot longer than I thought. And uh, I do kind of want to cluster these in ways that kind of make sense. So here we can, I can name this like the world generation menu or whatever. Um, and it just will be a little bit better organized for YouTube. So for now, that's going to do it. I'll be back with more in the next episode. We'll create our character. We'll talk about stats, attributes, uh, traits, things that are important for building a character and what I think is best for new players. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.